Tennessee Lift the shiners and blue collars Simple folk like you and me If it falls we let it lay Just a story for another day And if it grows, we grow it high To the good Lord by and by Way down in the holler Down in the hollers of West Virginia to Tennessee, lift the shiners and blue collars. I'm Johnny Ashley down in the hood in the woods, and today we're in Pocahontas, Virginia. In 1860, Andrew Stowers ran a blacksmith shop. He used coal from an open coal vein to feed his fires. A few years after the Civil War, Jordy Nelson came from Boone County, West Virginia. He traded his farm there for Mr. Stowers' thousand acres here, which turned into Tazewell County, Virginia. Mr. Jordan kept the original business and expanded it, including delivering coal to his customers. Mr. Nelson developed an oven that would burn coal for heat and take away the risk of burning down your house. Burning logs was dangerous in that time because one spark could end up burning your whole house down. Soon people came from miles around to buy one of Mr. Nelson's ovens and of course some coal to go with it. The story is that a man came from Bluefield and bought, bought a whole wagon load of coal. Mr. Nelson's aunt ran outside and she scolded him. She said, Jordy, if you sell it like this, you're going to sell it all out too fast. And then what are you going to do? In the late 1870s, the Southwest Virginia Improvement Company came to town. For $1,000, they bought 400 acres of Mr. Nelson's land. And soon, they bought the mineral rights to another 500 acres. That only left him with 100 acres of his land left. The town of Pocahontas, Virginia began as a coal camp. This mine was opened in 1882. The closest road or rail was 50 miles away, and in 1883, Norfolk and Southern completed the first rail to Pocahontas, and the boom was on, the coal was flowing. Commercial shipping on the New River Line began in May, and by the end of the year, 82,000 tons of coal had been moved. That same year, the first coke ovens opened. There ended up being, in total, 200 of the beehive-shaped coke ovens. Coke ovens refine the coal by removing impurities, make, therefore making the coal more suitable for use in foundries. Coal from the Pocahontas coal mines is some of the richest and highest quality coal in the world. It was used to win two world wars. It was used to fire the ovens during the Industrial Revolution, and it was used to dig the Panama Canal. Multiple churches sprang up, and in 1884, a log cabin school was built. The four churches had stiff competition from the 20 saloons that were operating in town, and Pocahontas earned a reputation as a tough spot. So here is the uh, Pocahontas Sea Hall. It was built in 1895, and actually the, uh, the courthouse is also in this building. One's on the uh, first floor, one's on the second floor. I gotta say, this whole downtown is fucking awesome, and I love it, but the best part of the whole downtown is this gargoyle. It's right here. Just keeping an eye on the rest of the, the street, see what's going on. So we're going to come back around. See, uh, I want to say this is the fire department. It looks like it burned out, which I'm going to say is just a, a horribly ironic fate. And this building next to it, um, I know this because of uh, the Facebook post, people commenting, that this was the, uh, my doctor's office, and I believe if he lived upstairs. But it has the most awesome ironwork on it. You see that? That is awesome, and I love it. 
and I love this whole street. It's all just brick, not quite cobblestone, but brick. And we got this building. I mean, it looks like it was grand and glorious. And now, I mean, you can just see we're just little by little is falling into disrepair and coming down. You see that? Must have been something else that was here. And it it came down and those couple little bricks is all, all that's left of it. In 1884, a huge mine blast happened in the Pocahontas East Mine. 114 men were killed. 65 of those men were white with 25 of those white men being recent European immigrants. The remaining 49 men were black and had moved from farther down in the south for a, a better life after being liberated in the Civil War. Now, the mine company, they had the company town segregated and they had the coal camp segregated. But why are they going to waste land on two separate graveyards. So they didn't do it. And they took what had been a park and they buried, for the first time in Virginian history, white men and black men next to each other. As time passed and more and more immigrants came to the New World and found industry, or found work, working in the coal fields, and you know, as longer the coal mines were open, more miners were killed in explosions and we're passing the graves of coal miners that were not only killed here in uh, Tazewell County, West Virginia or Tazewell County, Virginia but were also killed in neighboring Mercer County, West Virginia and uh, McDowell County, West Virginia You know, we can just come through and look at all the names on the graves and I'm not sure if that's Russian or Polish but you know a lot of these are look hard to pronounce and I mean none of them none of these are new dates oh, let's see what's a good one This is only what five year olds? And this one was a two year old. They died within a couple months of each other. That's real sad. That's real sad. Cochrane, I'm already seeing a couple Cochrans. Oh, here's another one. And here's the Reverend Reverend John Cochran. There is a, we got a Freemason marker on that grave. Oh, let's see what this one is. Pocahontas chapter of the RAM. Frederick Baker, 1891. And this one has the uh, the mason tag on it my boss at work here's another mason one my boss at work's got his uh a mason ring that he wears and i'm telling you even to this day it's like a little secret club and people see that ring on them and they're like hey we're one of them too i gotta be honest i've never been asked to join <laughs> a, a, a prestigious club like that. Thirty-three. Did, did I do my math right? That was thirty-three. Eighteen sixty-one to eighteen sixty-nine to eighteen ninety. That's real young. 1867 to 1889. It's like, what, 12? And if I'm doing my math wrong, please don't be bashing me because I'm not. I should be happy I can remember all this stuff to say.
1840 to 1907. Was it 57 years old? So, there's the Pocahontas Cemetery. Even, even the new looking ones or, I mean, old. Eighteen eighty-four. It doesn't say age twenty-four. Eighteen ninety-two to nineteen fifty-four. I mean, that's a new one, new-looking gravestone. And it's still, I mean, that's an older date. Ooh. Eighteen fifty six to eighteen eighty seven. There are graves, these gravestones are written in Italian, Polish, Russian, and Hebrew. This is the most diverse cemetery in all of Virginia. There's O'Connor, that's a good Irish name. Adobos? I'm not sure. But anyone know what language this is? Or this? I think the newest grave that I've seen was 1950, was the date of uh, death. Way down in the hollers of West Virginia to Tennessee Lived the shiners and blue collars In 1884, the old company store was open. It was the first company store in the Pocahontas fuel fields, which is going to be uh, southwest Virginia and then southwest West Virginia. They're kind of right there next to each other. The company store in Pocahontas, Virginia is no more. I'm not sure if it got torn down. I'm not sure if it got burned down, but it's not there anymore. So we're going to use our imagination, and we've gone three miles away to Bozavane Abs Valley area. And this is their Pocahontas Fuel Company company store. So we're gonna talk about this company store and we're just gonna pretend like it's the other town's company store. You know, living here, maybe it was out a little bit in the boondocks. That might have been a bit more in town. You know, coming here is what these people would have done for their everyday necessities but going to the company store that would have been in Pocahontas, Virginia, that would have been put on your Sunday best, we're making a day of it, we're going to go get lunch, we're going to get the finer things in life. Here, this is where you came for your jug of milk and get some steak. At first, miners could just deduct their purchases that they made here off their paycheck, but later on, the company devised a system where people were paid in script that was only redeemable at the company store. This is the Pocahontas Fuel Company offices. In 1907, the Southwest Virginia Improvement Company joined with other local mine owners to form the Pocahontas Fuel Company. The script that the workers were paid in was also used to pay for rent, pay for coal to heat their houses, and pay for electricity when electricity came around. Because of course you know the first electricity out here was owned by a coal company. So what happened was that even after these workers had paid for their houses for 20, 30 years, if they got injured and couldn't work, 
or they got fired, they could immediately be evicted from their houses because everything was on the 400 acres that the Pocahontas Fuel Company owned. The Pocahontas Fuel Company owned the land and all improvements on it. Company stores could come with a lot of corruption. So let's say you're a salesman and you're selling toilet paper. If you can get the company store to stock your toilet paper, the whole town is going to buy your toilet paper. You've got a corner on the market. You see these birds flying around my head? Or are they bats? <laughs> so if, it, if you got the company to stock your store, st stock the store with your product, you would corner the market. Everyone in that town would have to buy your brand of toilet paper. So it didn't matter if you had the best toilet paper. It didn't even matter if you had the cheapest toilet paper. The company was getting it at the best price. If you could go take that company representative out and show him a good time, you got that bid. And then everyone's going to have to buy your toilet paper. So there was a lot of room for some backroom deals, you know, little, little side moves. The first floor of the building was the company's store. It was filled with quality goods. This store would have carried everything from furniture to ground beef. When you worked in a company store situation, if the store did not stock quality merchandise, you were up a creek without a paddle. So you would want to work for a company that they would have good products in their store that you can buy. You wouldn't want to work for a company that their store was like the Kmart or company stores because then you're stuck getting Kmart stuff. If the company wants to charge you double the going rate for something, you don't have any option because you're paid in company script. You don't have any currency. There is no free market. The second floor of the building was used for the coal mine company offices. Companies would force people into debt by charging them more for food and rent than what they were paying them. Coal miners in debt could not leave the coal camps, and the coal companies would hire private detectives to enforce that rule. We're just coming in the back of what's going to be the offices, and you know you can just see all the old molding on the walls, you know, just how much detail and, uh, and beauty that this building was made with. So let's see what's in the dark part. <laughs> let's see what's in the dark. See, look at all this trim. See the old skylights? The roof ain't caving in. It's just the glass and the skylights came out. We're gonna come around here into the main store part. So this big room, I guess, would have been the store. I don't know. They said the offices were upstairs. So I don't really know why they'd have the store. And then in back, they'd have the offices up here. But this is kind of a, a common theme I've noticed between here and the Jenkins Jones Company store, which we're very close to on the, as the crow flies. It's just over the mountain. But, uh, you know, they'd be tearing out the steps a bit. And I just... You know what I'm saying? It ain't worth the fall. I bet you it looks about the same. So let's come back down here. I love these big, giant storefront windows too. I mean, it's letting in so much natural light. So then here we have the old, uh, an old elevator. You can see just the ruins of it down there, but. If we look up, you can see all the uh, mechanics, and there's even uh, some wires hanging. Old fuse box with everything pulled out. Now, I believe back here that these rooms were used for, um, for union functions and maybe like uh, other type of recreational functions, and the, you know, the, the, the company would let them do it. I know at my job, the uh, company has to give the union no time and space to do all their union stuff. 
and I'm assuming that this might have been a similar deal here. In Bluefield, West Virginia, in 1922, Mr. Nelson died at the age of 94. He was penniless and had nothing to show for owning the richest coal fields in the world. This is the first coal mine that was opened in the Pocahontas coal fields. It was closed in 1938 and turned into a museum. In 1954, the last coal mine in Pocahontas, uh, Virginia closed. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you liked it. If you did like it, you need to hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. You need to hit the subscribe button. You can check me out on Facebook as Hood in the Woods. You can find me on Instagram as Abandoned in Appalachia. Also, check out Clovis Draper's YouTube channel for some more mountain music.